Hi, I'm talking with Phil Olson, writer of A Twisty Christmas Carol. And I am talking to Doug Ingalia, director of A Twisted Christmas Carol. Oh, that worked out really well. Yeah. Let's talk about the first play you, you've written for the group Rat. Well, how long ago was that? Uh, 1997, so 22 years ago. And you were in it. How many plays have you written since then? Um, I have uh, 16 published plays. Uh, ten, 10 of them are with Samuel French, so they're full, full length uh, plays and musicals, and then some of them are, are one X. And so A Twisted Christmas Carol will be the, uh, the 17th. Well, I took the Minnesota stories, which most of my plays take place in a little town in northern Minnesota or a suburb of Minneapolis, and I just kind of adapted one of the Don't Hug Me musicals, A Don't Hug Me Christmas Carol, and turned it into a uh, little barbecue joint in West Texas, Buford's Open Pit Barbecue, so that's where it takes place, a little barbecue joint, West Texas. Um, why Texas, though? It's kind of interesting to go from Minnesota to Texas. I think the sensibilities are sort of similar in, in Texas, so I thought Texas, for a few reasons. One, um, there are a three or four really, you know, good plays that are set in Texas. You've got the fried, fried green tomatoes kind of southern. And so I wanted to kind of branch out and do something that I had never done before and see if it would work uh, if I did a story in, in Texas. Kind of most of the plays that people that do my plays are, are north of the Mason-Dixon line because they're set in Minnesota. And so I, I wanted to kind of capture a little bit different audience and, and to test myself a little bit to see if I could actually do it. This is unprecedented. Um, <laughs> in my experience because I'm I'm directing one of a number of different premieres that are happening with this show. Yes, it is uh, opening in eight cities all around the same time, kind of running concurrently in eight different cities. I have really nice relationships with theaters all around the country and so I just reached out to a lot of theaters that had done my other plays and uh, asked them if they'd be interested in being part of kind of this world premiere event. And, um, and so eight of them said, yeah, we're, we're on board. And so okay. <laughs> Including uh, the group rep. Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's fun. This is, uh, for me, a continuing experience of working with you since 1997. And it's been kind of a, a, a really fun, an almost nonstop lesson in, in comedy. Because what I because what I really enjoy about working with you in in the uh, in the process of your new plays is that um, I believe especially that a writer should participate in in the rehearsal process that they should not be shut out it's their work it should be it should be out there so you have something to say you should be able to say it it's not just what I think is common courtesy but it's also for me a learning experience. And I very much appreciate that. This is our sixth uh, world premiere that you've directed. Most directors don't like playwrights. And you know, they do like playwrights as long as they're dead, like Shakespeare, as long as they're not, not around. And so you are really unique in allowing me to actually throw stuff out, make some changes, give, give ideas during the rehearsal process, which I just love. And and, and, and I think that it makes the play better to be able to make changes and kind of go, let's try this, let's try that during the rehearsal process, which you um, allow me to do. So I'm very grateful for that. And not that many, very few directors will allow that. So thank you. There's so many holiday shows out there. Uh, is there something that you'd love for the audience to take with them after they've seen the show? First and foremost, just to be entertained and have a great time and, and you know, everybody kind of needs to laugh, uh, you know, right now and that's my number one goal is just people enjoy it and have fun and laugh. Because A Christmas Carol is, to me, the greatest kind of catharsis um, story with Scrooge and I love those kind of stories where people change during the course of them and especially get a big heart, you know. So I love this story and if people can take away from that maybe a little bit more Christmas spirit or maybe, you know, do what some of the characters in the story actually do, then that's a really nice plus too. If, if people can, you know, be a little kinder or a little gentler or a little more generous or that kind of a thing, um, especially during the holiday.